Well, welcome to Robert's Train Set, and here we go on another feature packed episode, possibly. Uh, well, hello, everybody. Um, yeah, so update number 14. Um, I hope you've enjoyed uh, number 13 or number 12 and 13. Um, and I said at the end of that that there might be quite a bit of delay. <laughs> um, well, maybe not as much as I thought it might be. Um, I have got, I have pushed the um, layout on, and I'll show you some bits that I've done. Not much, but a little bit, just to you know push it up. And obviously, I am in the process of trying these locos. Um, so, the other day, uh, Sunday in fact, um, there's a model railway club called um, Colchester and District and they had an, an open day basically, it wasn't an exhibition, it was an open day, just with some of their layouts. They had th three layouts as far as I can remember and a, a trade stall, or rather, you know, their own stall. Um, so I did manage to pick up a couple of bits I got two of those, which are sort of slightly poseable, although uh, <laughs> weirdly the forks won't go up beyond about there because they hit on the bits at the back, which is clever, but never mind. And then I got a, a tipper truck, <laughs> and I paid um, five pounds for that one and six pounds for those each so i was quite happy and although i'm not sure i'm going to be able to use it they were doing this roadway gauge master roadway for a fiver so i bought a couple of them so whether i'll ever use them i don't know we'll have to see <laughs> probably not um but we'll see so yeah i'm just going to show you a little bit here um it's been really really windy here i've just been out there because I've got the new house ready for sale next door, I've got a gap between my hedge and my conservatory, so you can actually get through into their back garden and they, they can get into mine. And the estate agent said um, it might be better if I've got a, an expandable screen. And I mean, it's only about, you know, that sort of width. Uh, you can just about get through it. So I've done that. And of course, when it winds, it was kept being blown away. So I've used some Velcro on the glass to hold it in and then a bit of that wire that I've been using on this to sort of tether it to the hedge. Um, so we'll see how that goes. It seems to still be there now. So other things to get on with, isn't there? And I'm awaiting the delivery of my back screen boards, my uh, 6mm MDF, uh, which I went and bought yesterday. So... Um, and he would have delivered it yesterday if I wasn't going to Clapton to get a few bits. Um, which uh, I had a nice day, it, well, nice afternoon in Clapton, it was all right. Nice and sunny and quite warm actually. So let's get on and I'll show you what we've got. Uh, but this isn't going to be that long, I don't think. I'll just um, bring you up to date again. That's what I want to try and do. Okay, cheers everybody, cheers. Oh, and. I do thank all the new subscribers. You've got me over 1,400 subscribers, which I think is phenomenal <laughs> for, for what I do. So we'll see how we go. Cheers. Bye. So I went shopping and I picked up some more of these acrylic paint, a few other bits as well. So uh, let's see how we go. So I was having a, <coughs> a bit of trouble with this sliding about on the leg frame. So I've decided to put a screw this end, and this will obviously be under the station. And if I go up the other end, I'll show you where that is. Um, in the sort of fiddle yard. Um, I'm sure I can disguise that with something. Um, so that's that, which sort of holds it on. I've got nothing in the middle. So the, uh, the major thing I've done is I've actually managed to glue my first bit of track down, as you can see. And I put some uh, uh, sleeper grime on it. So I took it outside to put the sleeper grime on. Um, and it's yes it's a bit patchy but uh, it probably would be anyway and I'm going to paint the side of the rails aren't I with a rust if you remember um, 
And you might also notice I've actually done some of that uh, paint um, underneath. So I did this because I wanted to make sure it would stick on, onto that painted surface, which it has done. I've also stuck in this uh, under track magnet. Um, in the instructions it tells you to stick the uh, metal plate in first and then stick the magnet to the metal plate. So I've used a bit of super glue to do that, just a couple of little dobs, you know. And that seems to have um, done all right. I've tried to uh, lift it out with the ruler like I showed um, in previous videos and it wouldn't come out. So I think it has stuck. So what I did notice is that although all this lot where the wood is dry quite quickly, this bit did seem to still be a little bit loose last night when I took more my uh, weights off, which we'll see in a photo soon. Um, but yeah, I'm quite happy with this. This has gone all okay. And one of the reasons I went to Clapton the other day, not solely for that, is I needed some more buffer stops. Now, um, I managed to buy four of the Hornby ones, which I quite like, and I think I'm going to paint them up. I bought some red paint to uh, sort of paint them up a bit with, and I can do the... Uh, uh, the grime on them can't I um, but they didn't have enough so I took the entire stock of four and I needed one more so I bought this um, gauge master one I believe it is isn't it um, or is it a Pico no it's a Pico went um, it's okay but yeah it's not exactly as solid as the um, the Hornby ones when they fit in I mean it's more realistic obviously because it's sort of made up of rails but uh, yeah so I might change this and have um, don't know. I almost bought one of the uh, the buffer type ones, you know, the sprung ones. But I thought being an old yard would they have one of them? I don't know. So um, as I said, um, you know, I painted all this uh, bed in, uh, painted across the <laughs> uh, under track and cutler. And it all seems to be working quite well. And that's the paint I use, the burnt umber. I did thin it down with some water. Don't think you need it neat. And yeah, trying the, uh, to pull it out after I glued it down with the uh, ruler, it didn't work. And it always did before. So yeah, I'm happy with that. So that's how I do all of them. And then I took it out on my uh, uh, table outside and put some... Um, tea towels down, quite a few actually as you can see, and had a go with a spray can, you know um, yeah it's nasty stuff um, I, I think I showed you before that it's uh, not very nice so um, there's a bit that I've sprayed and there's the normal stuff so what do you think, worth doing? and then I used um, that to glue the uh, track down so I just put it along where the rails were but I also put some on the sleepers because they weren't hollowed out of this track so I thought it was worth doing and as you can see I'm holding it in with pins and I just use the holes that I've done to do it and then I put my weights on which in this case are a load of these uh, books from uh, Reader's Digest I used to buy so I'd been into my local supplier, building suppliers, and uh, ordered me board. Um, and I ordered uh, six mil MDF um, and cut to a certain width, and two cuts the same full eight foot long, and then the off cut. And what arrived? One off cut, the big off cut, and in ply, four mil ply. So did I send it back? No. So the other thing, as you can see, uh, I've not got my board here at the moment, which is, um leaning up against there um, and although I used the the black tack on the doors I didn't really want to it was really hard to get it off and it's going to mark it well it already has isn't it so I'm going to try and use the blue tack which might be a bit more um, forgiving shall we say uh, it's only got to stop it's falling off but what I have done I notice on the back of my uh, Railmaster I link, E link, um, there were some slotted screw holes. So I've, I've actually mounted it on the end of the cupboard. So all I need to do now is make some sort of little shelf for the power um, uh, power unit to be uh, sat on. So uh, it's all coming along slowly. And I'm just about to get the, uh, the board back on here and, and set it up and run some locos. 
But after I'd run the trains, I got the itch to put some more track down. So I got this out and used it to cut some track for the first time, and it's really good. And I got all this lot ready um, and cut some new track to fit in and did what I needed to do. Glued it down and put the boards, uh, put the, uh, the books on it again. I also did this um, little drop of glue to see how it goes, and that had dried within probably two hours, like that. So it's, I haven't taken it off yet because this is obviously out in the air and uh, all that stuff under the books isn't so I'm going to leave it until later tonight. Ah, lovely. So um, what you're going to see after um, my mug, um, I did take some of the engines doing a little bit on the layout and I'm still testing. But as you've seen in this, I've actually started um, laying the track down, gluing it down. So it's pretty permanent. It's still only obviously fed with one feed from up here. Um, and I am thinking that when I get all these droppers in, it will be far better. So the logos I'm showing now, um, I will do again when we've got all the droppers in. Um, now some of these logos it's not the track that's causing the problem or the feed it's the logos so some of these really do need some attention from myself and i'm very lazy on um servicing them shall i say um so i'll do a little bit of commentary as they're running um and uh, i probably won't show the whole run that they do and I did film the whole run that they did but I'll probably cut it up a bit in this just to keep it shorter but if you want to see the whole so, run then let me know you're almost really up to date now I'm, I'm just working my way through um, sorting the track out putting new um, connectors on and I've forgotten the name of them um, and they're called um, doesn't even tell you what it is on the packet, you know. So the Hornby, <laughs> yeah, rail joiners, aren't they? You know. I mean, you know, Pico tell you what they are. So, um, and I'm also, as I said, trying to cut out lots of little joints um, until I run out of track that I can do that with. Um, but. You'll see some of the points changing here, and I'm using the you know the knobs at the edge, and they do seem to be working very well. Now I noticed the double one at the end. That you can feel you're doing it. You know there, there's there's um, um, there's pressure when you do it. You know, and it's nicely dampened. You know, you can do it nice and gently and whatever. The others are a lot freer, a lot freer. Now, I'm awaiting today, and today is the 11th of April, for a delivery from Rosa Sheffield, from uh, DPD. And I've actually invested in a few more new points um, for this, because I feel, as they're being stuck down, you don't want to uh, keep taking them up, and um, especially when they're ballasted, you know, it's, it's a pain, isn't it, you know? Um, uh, so, yeah. So I'm waiting on those coming, which should be here within um, a couple of hours, hopefully. Pretty good. I only ordered it yesterday, so it's great. So a little bit of running. Um, this is my testing, really, just to see how things go. Now, they're not all perfect by any chance in the imagination. Um, I think probably um, the uh, Class 37, which is a TTS decoder in a Backman uh, locomotive and the uh, A1 Flying Scotsman you'll see a bit later on are my best um, but I'll let you watch this
So as you can see with the 37, it wasn't all, uh, it's not really the loco, I think, it's more conductivity, you know, um, sorted hopefully when um, I get all the droppers in. Let's have a look at this uh, Tornado, this is a really bad one, this is my original, one of my original train set ones, um, which I did put stuff in, and it's been awful now, it needs to take the car and have a look at it, could have done it a long time ago. So even without me looking at this, uh, when we get all the droppers in and it's all connected, this would be better than it is now. Um, it runs better up on the uh, loft layout because of all those droppers. So having let the A1 Fly Scotsman do its whistle, um, now this is uh, ostensibly the sort of similar one to what we've just seen, but this has got a uh, lock sound decoder in it, um, version 5, and you'll see this runs really, really well. Um, this didn't really stop at all, even though I took it over even more track than the others. So at least with the um, 06 Junta, um, I don't have to fight over the noise because it's silent this one. Now this was really my ever worst one and that's why I put the shunter's truck on the back. But it still does get uh, affected by not getting the connectivity. And again it runs a lot better up on the loft railway with the droppers in. So I'm hoping the same will happen here. We'll have to see won't we. But the reason I'm uh, doing all this and just showing you a bit of it um, is when I do get it all sorted, I can run these again and do a, a um, you know, compare them, so to speak, to see how much better the droppers make to their running. But uh, yeah, you know, it's it's all right. I haven't shown all of the ones I've done, but uh, it, a representative uh, selection, shall we say. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and we just um, I'm just going to show you um, my delivery from the rails of Sheffield that came within probably the couple of hours that I said and we'll see how we get on with that so um, it's a parcel from uh, DBT and yeah within an, in about five or ten minutes of their first uh, chance of delivering it to me so no hanging about 
loads of bubble wrap as usual um, so the box was lined with it as you can see and then my items were wrapped in another lot of uh, bubble wrap um, and obviously we get the bit of paper from Rosa Sheffield so in it was uh, four points, two left hand, two right hand, but they're Backman ones, so they're the same as the Hornby, um, but they were only um, £11 odd, instead of what, 15 16 from Hornby ones, so I thought I'd give them a go. Um, and so far they seem to have worked out okay. So also I saw when I was looking this Legacy Ballast, and it looks okay, and it's all different colours, so I can mix up, because this is going to be quite a mix of ballast I would think and yes I have bought the uh, sprung buffers now whether I use them or not I don't know but we'll see they can always go upstairs and this is uh, how all, my, all it cost so still quite expensive this hobby isn't it so in the next episode we're going to I'm going to show you me gluing a bit of this track down just to uh, just a short bit um, and how I use all my books well you can see how I use all my books can't you um, and so far it seems to be working quite well so I hope you can join me for that cheers everybody, cheers <laughs>